Hi guys, it's Ben Heath from Lead Guru, and in this video, I'm going to show you my number one CBO strategy for Facebook ad campaigns. So CBO stands for Campaign Budget Optimization, and if you're not familiar with that feature, it basically allows you to set budgets at the campaign level as opposed to setting them at the ad set level, which is what you used to have to do. Now, Facebook have said they're going to make CBO mandatory. Um, it hasn't happened yet. We don't know whether it will happen. It may do at some point. But that feature, being able to set your budgets at the campaign level, really changes the way that you want to structure your Facebook ad campaigns. And we sort of come up with a way of structuring it that we find works really well in terms of generating great results for our clients with our, our Facebook ads, but also helps you in terms of optimization and uh, adjusting those campaigns to improve the results going forward to structure it this way. There's some things you can take advantage of. That's what I'm going to show you in this video is how I like to structure campaigns. So here I am inside a demonstration Facebook ad account. Don't worry about any of that. That's just um, stuff I've been using to create um, other videos. Oh, by the way, don't worry about what's behind me either. Um, it's not my usual background when I record my videos, but I'm at the moment, I'm in the middle of recording um, a bunch of course material. Hence, you can see lights and all sorts set up. Um, but I just quickly took a break to um, to do something a little bit different and uh, and get this recorded for you guys. Okay. Oh, one other thing. I've got two free things for you um, that I'm going to mention at the end of the video. So make sure you stick around for that. They're Facebook advertising related resources you can get for free. I think you're going to find them really valuable. So make sure you uh, stick around for that. Okay, let's um, let's go through this process now then. So I'm in uh, uh, Ads Manager, obviously. You want to navigate here to sort of follow along. And I'm going to click Create. I'm going to create a new campaign. So let's just call this example um, CBO campaign. Uh, buying type, I'm going to use uh, auction as I basically always do. I've created a video on buying types and reach and frequency, things like that. So you can um, check that out if you want. Campaign objective, I'm going to use conversions in this example. Most of the time I'm going to use conversions when I create um, Facebook advertising campaigns. Again, I've got other videos about Facebook ad campaign objectives and things like that. So that's not what I'm going to cover in um in this video here. Campaign budget optimization, that's what this, this video is about. So obviously I want to turn that on and then I want to set a budget. Um, I would strongly recommend you set a budget that you can afford to experiment with whenever you're starting a new strategy, a new campaign um, structure. You want to test it with, with something that you can afford to lose in case it doesn't work. Obviously, if it does work, it's very easy to scale up. So whatever that happens to be for your company, um, daily budget is what I want to use as well. Again, I've created videos around should I use daily budgets, lifetime budgets, all that sort of stuff. So you can check out my YouTube channel for that if you want. But I use daily budgets. Right, let's just pop in um, some stuff in here for now. And then we'll get to the, the campaign, the CBO campaign structure stuff, which is what this video is all about. Right, let's save that to draft. And then we'll go through the various levels, starting obviously at the campaign level. So we've got... Everything's set up already here. We've got auction, conversions, CBO's turned on, we've got daily budget, we've got lowest cost. Again, I've got a video, I'll include a link in the video description talking about um, campaign bid strategies, whether you want to use lowest cost, etc, etc. So check that out if you're interested. Most of the time, I am going to use lowest cost. Let's minimize that down, click into that campaign and take a look at the ad set level. Now, I'm not going to go through all the settings at the ad set level. So I'm not going to show you how to set up targeting options, how to research them using audience insights, how to create various things. Um, I've got plenty of other videos that cover that. I'll include a bunch in the video description below. There's going to be tons of links to other videos in the video description below. Um, but hopefully that'll be really useful for you guys. So I'll include one on audience insights. I'll include one on how to create lookalike audiences. That's what I'm going to talk about in a minute. What this video is about is the campaign budget optimization um, how that changes, how I like to structure Facebook ad campaigns, how that feature changes. So what I like to use is four or five different ad sets. And that's the biggest thing with CBO is that instead of setting a budget at the ad set level, so let's say, for example, I, I added in a targeting option into that ad set and I say to Facebook, here's $20 a day that I want you to spend in this ad set. And they will spend $20 a day, okay? But I, instead, I could have four or five different ad sets in one campaign, and I could set the campaign at the uh, set the budget at the campaign level, and say to Facebook, "Look, here's a hundred dollars a day. Um, allocate this budget amongst these different ad sets as you see fit. So if you see that some ad sets are producing much better results than others, spend more money on those ad sets. Okay? If you see that some ad sets are underperforming, spend less money on those ad sets. So basically, it allows you to allocate budget more intelligently." and really benefit from um, Facebook working out, oh, okay, this lookalike audience is performing really well, this interest-based targeting option isn't performing really well. It also really helps with one big, big thing to do with Facebook advertising, which is obviously retargeting and advertising to warm audiences. Now, if you'll have seen any sort of Facebook advertising-related material, you will have seen that when you 
run a Facebook ad campaign, you definitely want to be retargeting people that are already familiar with your business. So this would be people on your email list. This would be people um, who visited your website, stuff like that. Because those people are already, they've warmed up a bit. You know, they've had an interaction with your business before. They've perhaps consumed some of your content. They're more ready to buy than other people. Now, what a lot of people do is they create a separate retargeting campaign. And the issue with doing that is it's very hard to work out exactly how much you should be spending on a retargeting campaign. Warm audiences, people like website visitors, email lists, those audiences are usually much, much smaller than cold audiences like lookalike audiences and interest-based targeting options. And because of that, people very, very often overspend on a warm audience. And that can often lead to uh, a much higher cost per conversion than you'd otherwise see. Because, just think about it logically, if you're advertising to, let's say, 3,000 people on an email list, and you are spending too much, you're just gonna bombard those people with your ads. If they're seeing your ads five, six times a day, every day for two weeks, that's nowhere near as effective as if they're seeing your ad once every couple of days for two weeks. Because if they're, you know, by the time they've seen your ad for the seventh or eighth time, they're either gonna buy or they're not. You're just wasting money continuing to advertise to them. So when people have separate retargeting campaigns, they often, often overspend, very, very easy to do. But if you include your warm audiences, your the pe email list, website visitors, things like that, as an ad set within a CBO campaign, Facebook will allocate your budget accordingly. And they'll do so intelligently. So they won't massively overspend on your warm audience ad sets. Because they'll know, they'll see, you know, Facebook can work this out. They'll see that the frequency number is 12. Right, we need to really scale back on spending more targeting these people and instead spend money on, um, you know, some of the other uh, audiences that you've got within this campaign. So Facebook can basically work that out for you, what your budget level should be for your warm audiences as part of an overall um, CBO campaign. Really, really uh, beneficial campaign structure to be able to include that that way, and that's how we always do it now. For all our clients, uh, I think for just about all our clients, we've got this um, up and running now, so that's how I'd recommend you do it. So I've just sort of talked you through the logic, now let's go ahead and implement this. So I'm not gonna go into, well actually, let's just very quickly go into the ad set to show you. Uh, I'm not gonna mess around with any of these conversion events and stuff like that. I've created videos on all this stuff, so check out my YouTube channel. If you, if you go down this and you see any settings like, you know, what's a saved audience or what's opti uh, what's the placements or what's optimization for ad delivery, I've got videos on all of it. So make sure you, you go to my YouTube channel and check that out. But let's say I'm gonna um, create this ad set is gonna be a, let's go with, let's say a 1% lookalike. And we're gonna create that 1% lookalike based off of purchases. And that's what our audience is gonna be. Okay, so let's now go down. This is a demonstration ad account, so I've created um, these lookalike audiences in here. So let's go lookalike audience based off product purchases within the last 180 days. Fantastic. Again, I'm not gonna mess around with any of this stuff. That's all covered in other videos. I wanna keep this um, tight and on topic. So we've got a 1% lookalike audience based off of purchases. So let's now duplicate this. So what I would usually do when I said we're gonna have four or five different ad sets, what I'd like to do is I have one warm audience ad set one or two lookalike audience ad sets, and then one or two other cold audience ad sets. So things based off behaviors, interests, things like that, okay? So we've got one based off purchases. Now, a lookalike audience based off previous purchases is nearly always gonna be your best lookalike audience. That's often gonna be your best cold targeting option is a lookalike audience based off previous purchases. Because who's better to advertise to than people that are just like people that have already bought from you? Okay, but let's say, for example, your purchases list only has, I don't know, 300 people in it. You, you're fairly new to this. You haven't got that many purchases. You've only had 300 people buy. Fine. Or maybe, you know, you sell a $10,000 product, in which case, you know, if you had 3, per, 300 purchases, that's, uh, that's quite a lot of money. In that case, you're probably going to want to test that against a lookalike audience based off something else, like an email list or like website visitors, if there are far more people within that source audience. So let's say you've got 300 previous purchases, but you've got... 5,000 people on an email list. Well, in that case, actually, the email list lookalike may outperform the purchases lookalike because 5,000 people gives Facebook a lot more data with which to create a lookalike audience. And with everything being equal, the larger the source audience, the better results you're likely to see. Okay, so if that's the case, if my email list is much, much bigger than my previous customer list, or I've got way more website traffic than I have customers, then I would go ahead and test another um, lookalike audience option here. 
So let's say, for example, we've got we've got our ad set 1% lookalike based off uh, purchases. We're also going to do 1% lookalike based off email list. Scroll down to the relevant section. Let's get rid of that. And let's pop in, here we go, lead magnet opt-ins, um, which is basically the same thing as obviously an email list. That's how they got onto the email list in the first place. Right, so those are, are our two lookalike audiences. Now let's go ahead and duplicate that out and create um, another ad set based on another cold audience target option. Now you may be thinking, what is the point in targeting another cold audience when we've already got the lookalikes? Aren't lookalikes supposed to deliver the best results? And the answer is yes. Lookalikes very often do deliver the best results, but not always. In around 10, 15% of the cases, we will find that a different cold audience targeting option produces better results than a lookalike. I don't really know why. Um, sometimes it just seems that for certain businesses, certain products and services, there are interest-based, behavior-based targeting options that just absolutely nail the target audience. They, they're just perfect. And in those cases, you want to um, add those in. Also, if you're just getting started and you don't have any source audiences, you don't have any purchases, any email list, subscribers, any website traffic with which to create a lookalike audience, then you're going to want to obviously target some um, interest-based, uh, look, some other cold audience targeting options. So I want obviously want to take that out of there. By the way, guys, if you don't know how to create a lookalike audience, there will be a link in the video description for exactly how to do that. And then I want to put in some detailed targeting in here. Now, I, I sort of, I'm gonna, in this example, let's um, say I'm advertising my five-part Facebook ad template, okay, which is a lead magnet low for free to get people onto my email list. Now, let's say, for example, in this detailed targeting section, I'm offering this, you know, I, I want to find people that are sort of interested in... Uh, Facebook advertising, likely to be advertising on Facebook. And I've done the research on my own target and um, you can use audience insights on my own target market. You can use audience insights to find great targeting options for you. Again, link in the video description. Um, but let's say I put in some, I, I know this market because obviously it's my own. But one of the options I might want to target is business page admins. Okay. That's slightly better than Facebook page admins because there's lots of Facebook pages to do with like sports clubs and, and local communities and things like that that um, aren't going to advertise on Facebook. But a lot of businesses and a lot of people who are admins of business pages on Facebook are going to advertise. So using them as a targeting option is, is something I'd like to do. Again, when you're using this sort of stuff, there's other things you want to do around the targeting. Make sure you check out my other videos for that stuff. Um, this is just to do with the campaign structure. Okay. Uh, no, I didn't want to do that. Let's click into the campaign. Right, oh, I need to rename that now. So who are we targeting here? We're targeting business page admins. And then let's duplicate that out. I said one to two cold audience targeting options. So we've got business page admins and let's do exactly the same. But in this time, we're gonna go with social media marketing. These people are gonna be highly likely to be interested in a Facebook advertising related free resource. So we can try that as an option, social media marketing. Okay, there are loads of other options. You can get more specific. Oh, I've added in job titles in there. I just had a look at that and I thought, why has it just got a thousand people? Um, I've got the wrong one. So let's do this now, social media marketing. I want the social media marketing interest. There we go. That's something to look out for, by the way, guys, is uh, to do exactly that. That's got four million people in the UK. That sounds a lot more like it. Okay, again, I'm not gonna cover the other stuff here. So we've got our four cold audience ad sets. Now before I move on to the warm audience ad sets, something I need to mention in here is we've just got one targeting option per ad set. Now a lot of people recommend that you put a whole bunch of different targeting options in each ad set. That's not something that I would recommend. I want one targeting option per ad set. So here we've got social media marketing, here we've got business page admins, and then these two we've got the, the relevant lookalike audience. I want to keep them separate because I want to know exactly what produces the best results. You know, if we run this campaign and we're, let's say after purchases, for example, of a product, and this audience produces a cost per purchase of $7, and this audience produces a cost per purchase of $6, I want to know that difference. That is valuable money-saving information right there. If you put both of these into the same audience, um, 
it's, you, you're not going to be able to work that out. You're not going to be able to see which ones perform best. So when I said at the beginning of the video, when we structure our CBO campaigns, we're doing this with future optimization in mind because that's what we mainly do as a Facebook ads agency is we optimize our clients' campaigns, we make adjustments. Um, that's why we have one thing per ad set. Now, if there are a bunch of different uh, interest targeting options you want to test, that's fine. Park them for now, okay? So I don't like to go above about five. CBO campaigns seem to struggle with more than five different ad sets to optimize around. Um, so I don't like to go above about five, but just park them for now. Once you've run this campaign for you know five, six days, you'll very quickly see, oh, okay, this business page admins is not working at all, but this social media marketing interest is great. Pause the business page admins, put in one of the new ones that you want to test and go from there. Okay, very simple uh, process, optimizing a campaign going forward. Now, we need our warm audience ad set. So, let's duplicate, it'd be easier and quicker. So with our warm audience ad set, so let's go, I'll, I'll rename it in a second. <clears throat> Obviously we wanna to come to the custom audiences section. We wanna make sure we get rid of any interests first. When it comes to our custom audience section, and here, I like to bundle warm audiences. Now, what I just said about cold audiences was that you want one per, um, you want one targeting option per ad set. That's not what I want to do with my warm audiences because I I don't need to work out which produces the best results, or website visitors, or my email list. Not the lookalike audiences based off those, but the actual people that are on my email list, the actual people that have visited my website because I know that those people are going to produce a better cost per purchase or cost per lead or whatever than cold audiences. I'm going to be targeting them. So I don't need to work out which ones work and which ones don't and pause the underperformers going forward. And with that being the case, because I know I'm gonna be advertising to these people, I want to create the largest warm audience possible because that's gonna help Facebook. Facebook prefers larger audiences. Where all things are equal, larger audiences produce better results. So the largest warm audience I can put into one ad set, the better. Now this will depend on what sort of ad set, what sort of warm audiences you have. So for example, in this um, demonstration account, I've set up all website visitors, but I'm also gonna add in people on the email list and I'm gonna add in the product purchases. Bearing in mind with product purchases, if you're advertising the same product um, that they've already bought, don't advertise to them unless it's a consumable product that they will rebuy. Um, hopefully that's fairly self-explanatory, self but you can, in fact, if that's the case, you may even want to click exclude and exclude previous product purchases. Um, and if that's the case, you may want to exclude them from your other ad sets as well. But that's just a little aside. Let's assume that you are advertising a uh, brand new product. Then yes, that's something you would definitely want to advertise to people who have bought your other products. Okay, so I'm going to include all three in there. Again, that... Uh, that might seem contradictory to what I talked about with the cold audiences, but it isn't. I want to advertise to all these people, therefore want to create the largest warm audience possible. The reason why I separate out the other ones into single targeting options is because I may not continue advertising to the underperformers. So in here, I'm gonna call this my warm audience. Get that out of the way. And I've got, uh, what have I got in here? I've got purchases, I have email list, and I have website visitors. Fantastic. Okay, so that's stage, well, stage two effectively. Those are the ad sets in my CBO campaign. This is my number one CBO strategy for a Facebook ad campaign. Now we need to talk about what happens at the ad level, because obviously it's a little bit different. So we've got five different ad sets. When I first launch a CBO campaign, the most important thing for me to work out isn't ad images, ad copy, ad headlines, it's targeting. So what I wanna be able to do is properly test these targeting options I've set up against each other. Now the only way you can properly test that is if you include the same ads within each one of these ad sets. Because let's say, for example, if I was to include one ad in this ad set and a completely different ad in this ad set, and then the social media marketing ad set is the best performer, I don't know whether that's because that's the best targeting option or whether that's because the ad within it um, performs better than the different ad within this ad set, okay? So I want the same ads in each ad set. That's very, very important. That way you can test. Now, 
With that said, it doesn't mean that I just have to have one ad in each ad set. So let's click into one of these. Let's choose social media marketing as an example. Well, actually, we've got a bunch of different um, example ads. So I'm just going to clear these off because it's in draft mode and get rid of those to make it easy. Right. So we've got, let's me just check what ad set that is in. Is it in social media marketing? Um, oh, it's in draft mode, so I can't. Never mind. Doesn't matter. So what do I want to do? I want to, again, set this up with future testing in mind. So when I first create a Facebook ad campaign, one of the first things I normally want to do is establish the best ad format for this type of business. So what works better for selling this product or service? Is it a video ad? Is it a carousel? Is it an image? So for example, I may create image ad, okay? And then I would duplicate that. In fact, let's create a few different duplicates. Let's go with four ads. A few different duplicates. And I might have a different ad format in each. So let's minimize this down. I'm not gonna sort of go into each one. Um, I'm just going to change the, nope, that's not what I meant to do. I'm just gonna change the names. So let's say we've got image ad, and we're testing that against a video ad. And then we're testing that against a carousel ad. And then perhaps we want to test a couple of different images, okay? That's the sort of structure we would start with. And then what you'll find is that within, let's say, week one of running this campaign, out of these five ad sets, we're gonna see, okay, you know what? This ad set works really well. The warm audience ad set obviously works really well, but the other three are rubbish. Let's pause those, okay? Fine. Then you go into the ads and you see the carousel and the video did very well, so let's keep those two running. The two images didn't. Or this image ad performed really well and this video ad didn't, but this image ad and this carousel didn't. So the way we're going to structure things within um, each ad set is we're going to have the same three or four ads in each ad set. And I'm going to limit myself to three or four. You don't want to go and create many more than that because, again, it gives Facebook too much to optimize around. Remember, in this campaign, there's going to be five ad sets and let's say a maximum of four ads in each. That's 20 different ads that are actually running. Okay, obviously only four different variations because you're going to have the exact same ad running in each ad set, but there's still 20 different um, ads for Facebook to allocate budget to to see how they perform. So you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to give them 60 or something. It's going to take forever or a monstrous budget for Facebook to work through all that and work out what performs best. So I'm going to have three or four different ads. And as I said, what I want to start with is testing uh, ad format. Once I tested ad format, I'm then going to either make a decision or uh, limit myself usually to one or two. So for example, if video ad and carousel perform really well, great, that's what we're gonna focus on going forward. If image ads perform really well, great, that's what we're gonna focus on going forward. So once you've sort of established that, let's say after a week, well then you might want to start testing images. So let's say image ads perform best, great. You might wanna test three or four different images. Um, then once you've established which images perform well, you might want to move on to headlines, do the same thing. Once you've done headlines, the primary text, the copy, uh, call to action buttons, whatever. You can basically work your way down the list. And that's the process that we do of optimizing and making adjustments to improve campaigns. Again, I'll, in I'll include a link to a video where I talk about that in detail, about how to optimize a Facebook ad campaign. Um, but that is the structure of how I'm gonna set things up in the first place to make it easier for us to optimize the campaigns going forward. And, and setting things up this way really, really does help. So just very quickly, I'm not gonna include details about the ads themselves because again, there's other videos for that. But we're gonna try and make these ads relatively similar if we're testing different ad formats. There's only so much you can do with that. Obviously a video ad is inherently very different to an image ad, but keep it about the same topic, focus on the same benefits of the product, et cetera, et cetera. Because I wanna know, I wanna know, does video perform better or does image perform better? Because different markets, you'll see different things, you'll see different results, okay? And that is how, obviously you then duplicate those four ads across different ad sets, but that is how I like to structure CBO campaigns. That's my number one CBO strategy for Facebook ad campaigns. Um, and it's one that I would strongly recommend um, you use. It can make your life a lot easier, particularly if you're an agency offering Facebook advertising services for clients um, and you've got lots of campaigns to deal with and, and sort of keep on track of and you know work out what's performing well. I would strongly recommend that you structure it this way. Right, at the beginning of the video, I mentioned two free things that I think you're gonna be very interested in. The first is my Facebook ads mastermind group. 
So this is a free Facebook group. Um, it's a fantastic community. There's more than 14,000 members, all people that are looking to get better results with Facebook advertising. There's tons of experts in there that are very happy to answer your questions. We'd love for you to join and get involved. There'll be a link in the video description. Go ahead, request to join. I'll approve that request. Um, and every day, there's hundreds of people posting questions, getting questions answered. Um, as I said, awesome community with over 14,000 members. It's growing very, very fast. So go ahead and join that if you want better results from Facebook. And another thing, I quickly mentioned it in this video, is my five-part Facebook ad template. So um, if you're looking for better results from Facebook and you're sort of thinking, how do I create an ad? What copy do I use? What headline do I use? What images do I use? That's what's covered in my Facebook ad template because it's got um, six of the best performing ads that we've created for our clients that all have produced fantastic results. And what I've done in this template is I've sort of broken down each ad and I've explained, right, we wrote this headline and it worked because of X, Y, and Z. We used this image and it worked because it's colorful and it, it's eye-catching and it's got this and this and this. Um, so if you, if you sort of want to get better results from Facebook, you want better Facebook ads, you can get that template, it's free to download, um, and you can obviously model from the ads given in there. Again, there'll be a link in the video description. Gonna be tons of links in the video description, but I'll label them all so you'll know what's what, and it should be easy for you guys to work out exactly what it is you want to grab. Um, so yeah, so I'd strongly recommend you check that out. One other thing I wanna mention is our Facebook advertising services. So Lead Guru is a specialist Facebook advertising agency, and if you're spending more than $3,000 a month, or you're new to Facebook advertising and you want to spend more than $3,000 a month, then we would, um, I'd love to have a conversation with you, with, our track record of producing great results for our clients with Facebook advertising is outstanding. You can check out our website. There's tons of screenshots of results we've been able to produce where we're generating a 20x return on investment and you know generating tens of thousands of leads and things like that. So we've produced those sort of results. I'd love to have a conversation with you if you are uh, spending or planning to spend more than $3,000 a month on your Facebook ads, you can apply for a free strategy session with me. A uh, free 30 minutes where we can basically discuss what it is that we do as an agency, how we might be able to help you, and I can get more information about your business to see whether um, you would be a suitable company for us to work with. Again, link in the video description, that'll be right at the bottom. Go ahead and click that, book a session with me, and we can uh, go from there. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, please subscribe to the channel for more Facebook advertising related content. Uh, don't forget to comment below to let me know. Obviously, any questions, pop them in the comments. I answer every single question on my YouTube channel. Uh, that's becoming more and more difficult as it's growing, but it's something I'm committed to. So go ahead and do that. And I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks a lot now. Bye-bye.